Section 89 of the Ontario Reader's Third Book by the Ontario Ministry of Education. Read for LibriVox.org by Marian Martin. Don Quixote's Fight with the Windmills by Miguel de Cervantes. I beseech your worship, Sir Knight Errant, quoth Sancho to his master, be sure you don't forget what you promised me about the island, for I dare say I shall make shift to govern it, let it be never so big. You must know, friend Sancho, replied Don Quixote, that it has been the constant practice of knights errant in former ages to make their squires governors of the islands or kingdoms they conquered. As they were thus discoursing, they discovered some thirty or forty windmills that are in that plain, and as soon as the knight had spied them, Fortune, cried he, directs our affairs better than we ourselves could have wished. Look yonder, friend Sancho, there are at least thirty outrageous giants whom I intend to encounter, and having deprived them of life, we will begin to enrich ourselves with their spoils, for they are lawful prize, and the extirpation of that cursed brood will be an acceptable service to heaven. What giants? quoth Sancho Panza. Those whom thou seest yonder, answered Don Quixote, with their long extended arms, some of that detested race have arms of so immense a size that sometimes they reach two leagues in length. Pray look better, sir, quoth Sancho. Those things yonder are no giants, but windmills, and the arms you fancy are their sails, which being whirled about by the wind, make the mill go. Tis a sign, cried Don Quixote. Thou art but little acquainted with adventures. I tell thee they are giants, and therefore if thou art afraid, go aside and say thy prayers for I am resolved to engage in a dreadful unequal combat against them all. This said, he clapped spurs to his horse Rocinante, without giving ear to his squire Sancho, who bawled out to him and assured him that they were windmills and no giants. But he was so fully possessed with a strong conceit of the contrary that he did not so much as hear his squire's outcry, nor was he sensible of what they were, although he was already very near them. Far from that, Stand, cowards! cried he as loud as he could. Stand your ground, ignoble creatures, and fly not basely from a single knight, who dares encounter you all. At the same time, the wind rising, the mill sails began to move, which when Don Quixote spied, Base miscreants, cried he, though you move more arms than the giant Brarius, you shall pay for your arrogance. He most devoutly recommended himself to his lady Dulcinea, imploring her assistance in this perilous adventure, and so covering himself with his shield and couching his lance, he rushed with Rocinante's utmost speed upon the first windmill he could come at, and running his lance into the sail, the wind whirled it about with such swiftness that the rapidity of the motion presently broke the lance into shivers and hurled away both knight and horse along with it, till down he fell, rolling a good way off in the field. Sancho Panza ran as fast as his ass could drive to help his master, whom he found lying and not able to stir. Such a blow had he and Rocinante received. Mercy on me, cried Sancho. Did not I give your worship fair warning? Did not I tell you they were windmills and that nobody could think otherwise unless he had also windmills in his head? Peace, friend Sancho, replied Don Quixote. There is nothing so subject to the inconstancy of fortune as war. I am verily persuaded that cursed necromancer, Freston, who carried away my study and my books, has transformed these giants into windmills to deprive me of the honor of the victory. Such is his inveterate malice against me, but in the end all his pernicious wiles and stratagems shall prove ineffectual against the prevailing edge of my sword. Amen, say I, replied Sancho and so heaving him up again upon his legs, once more the knight mounted poor Rocinante, that was half shoulder-slipped with his fall. This adventure was the subject of their discourse, as they made the best of their way towards the pass of Lapite, for Don Quixote took that road, believing he could not miss of adventure in one so mightily frequented. However, the loss of his lands was no small affliction to him, and as he was making his complaint about it to his squire, I have read, said he, friend Sancho, that a certain Spanish knight, having broken his sword in the heat of an engagement, pulled up by the roots a huge oak tree, 
or at least tore down a massy branch, and did such wonderful execution, crushing and grinding so many moors with it that day, that he won himself and his posterity the surname of the Pounder or Bruiser. I tell thee this, because I intend to tear up the next oak or home tree we meet, with the trunk whereof I hope to perform such wondrous deeds that thou wilt esteem thyself particularly happy in having had the honour to behold them, and being the ocular witness of achievements which posterity will scarce be able to believe. Heaven grant you may, cried Sancho, I believe it all, because your worship says it, but, and it please you, sit a little more upright in your saddle. You ride sidling, methinks, but that I suppose proceeds from your being bruised by the fall. It does so, replied Don Quixote, and if I do not complain of the pain, it is because a knight-errant must never complain of his wounds. Then I have no more to say, quoth Sancho, and yet heaven knows my heart, I should be glad to hear your worship groan a little now and then, when something ails you. For my part, I shall not fail to bemoan myself when I suffer the smallest pain, unless indeed it can be proved that the rule of not complaining extends to the squires as well as knights. Don Quixote could not forbear smiling at the simplicity of his squire, and told him he gave him leave to complain not only when he pleased, but as much as he pleased, whether he had any cause or no, for he had never yet read anything to the contrary in any books of chivalry. End of section 89 This recording is in the public domain.